everyone, and uh, my name is Erin Corgan, and thank you so much for taking the time today to listen to my culminating report on uh, precision public health and health equity. Um, before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge the land in which I've studied, lived, and completed my practicum on over the course of my graduate degree. Uh, the beautiful campus of the University of Victoria is located on the traditional lands of the Songhees, Esquimalt, and Wisnanic people. The Public Health Agency of Canada is positioned on the traditional unceded territory of the Anishinaabe people. Throughout my practicum, I completed my work remotely from home on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron-Wendat, Oneida, and Haudenosaunee's people. Over the course of this past semester, I completed my practicum at the Public Health Agency of Canada within the Social Determinants of Health Division in the Equity Analysis and Policy Research Team. In this role, I had the privilege to conduct a scoping review that analyzed the current evidence on the novel topic of precision public health. The purpose of this scoping review was to evaluate the current context of precision public health and to distinguish any factors influencing the prevalence of health inequities. The foundation of the review aims to inform those working and studying in the field of public health on the current understandings of precision public health and how it can be applied into practice. Uh, the research question intends to ask, will current and new technologies, advanced methods, and big data systems for the purpose of precision public health contribute to or reduce the prevalence of health inequities across populations? So before diving into the key takeaways for public health practice, I would like to provide you with some background on precision public health and how it came to fruition. Uh, so pre precision public health is an evolving practice that focuses on generating stronger analysis and prediction of the causes of public health risks as to better create tailored interventions at a population level. Specifically, precision public health utilizes information from new and existing technologies and unconventional data systems, such as big data collected from smartphones, wearable technology, social media, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. Precision public health is, has emerged over the last several years, um, acting as a complement to the current practice is what is known as precision medicine. Precision medicine focuses on detecting, treating, and curing disease based on an individual context. But what is missing is an understanding of the upstream consequences and the downstream issues that cause these disease experiences and how life expectancy is ultimately influenced. Precision public health has great potential in becoming an innovative public health instrument that can work to improve health, reduce disparities, and eliminate health inequities. Precision can be achieved when we are able to more efficiently understand and target what makes populations susceptible to disease, and by further developing policies and interventions to improve health. Lastly, the practice of precision public health aims to achieve the same outcomes as traditional public health, but by focusing on achieving data collection and analysis in enhanced timing and by incorporating broader sources of data through digital methods. This immediate identification of public health concerns um, is supported through what is known as digital epidemiology. So the scoping re review data search that I completed uh, was based on the five steps outlined by Arkski and O'Malley and four rounds of screening took place during the iterative evidence review process. Um, the PRISMA diagram within this slide um, shows each phase of the study selection beginning with 774 articles and concluding with 75 total articles that were included within the review. So as you can see, in the current graph, uh, the majority of the articles were published within the last five years, uh, increasing greatly around 2017. And something to point out is that the evidence on this topic is still relatively new, especially within Canada. Um, so the next few slides I will go through are going to outline the most significant takeaways uh, from the scoping review. The first significant takeaway is related to health disparity, health equity, and health literacy. Health literacy is defined by an individual's ability to search for, understand, and use health-related information in a way that can promote and maintain good health. The intersection observed between social structures and individual life experiences, known as social position, is a factor that highly influences health outcomes and health inequity. As the practice of public health evolves, more focus will need to be placed on social stratification, influencing the distribution of power and resources. 
The second takeaway is related to technology, big data, and surveillance. Technology is moving faster than policy can keep up. Discrepancies within the current design and development of health technologies and AI is of particular importance when implementing a precision public health approach. Limited representation of diverse groups during technology production and testing phases can certainly influence how effective precision public health can be in practice. Uh, the third significant takeaway is related to underserved and priority populations. The strength of using big data is that it is able to single out associations based on patterns from sources like geographic information systems, electronic health records, and social media. But what is missing is the person-centered approach that we often promote within public health. The digital divide is a relatively new term. Um, that describes the inequities present between populations in relation to access and affordability of digital resources. Access to internet, for example, empowers communities by enhancing education, access to information, communication, and coordination, which can double to improve population health. The final significant takeaway is related to ethical considerations and uh, public health core values. A precision public health approach that is guided by core public health values, such as community empowerment, social justice, respect for diversity, um, is more apt to improve health inequities. And as technology, big data, and AI evolve, not only will a precision public health ethical framework be essential, but so will the involvement of government oversight during non-traditional data collection. So how can precision public health become a tool to help shape health equity? Precision Public Health uses the best available data and technology to target the correct interventions to the right population at the right time. Social media is an example of a technology environment where data is continuously generated, providing insight on human behavior patterns and self-reported health. Additionally, Precision Public Health offers a promising partnership with Precision Medicine, working together in a telescope approach. Precision medicine can allow for a telescope down vantage point viewing the genome and individual health, whereas precision public health can uh, provide the telescope back out vantage point viewing health from the micro, meso, and macro context. Precision public health can also be used as a key tool during COVID-19. Wearable fitness trackers and social media trends can monitor incoming data at faster rates uh, than traditional methods, identifying specific populations at increased risk for COVID-19 and the unintended impacts like mental illness and social isolation. COVID-19 has highlighted the pressing need for ongoing research and evaluation on the impacts of the social, economic, and political factors that contribute to inequities, providing the perfect opportunity to showcase how precision public health can be used. So as public health professionals begin to apply precision public health into their daily practice, themes of data ownership, control, access, and possession must be ingrained into the model. These four themes resemble what is known as the OCAP principles that were put forth by the First Nations communities in Canada as a tool to guarantee data sovereignty. Expanding on this set of OCAP principles to apply universally to all underserved and priority populations can in turn influence how data is collected, stored, and used, which can um, in turn represent the lived experiences and needs of populations. So it is encouraged that a more in-depth national and global review be conducted in order to expand on how precision public health can be applied in practice. A larger focus on the impacts of the social determinants of health will also be necessary as to reduce the gap between health equity and inequity in Canada. More community-based participatory research should also be conducted as to allow for public health professionals to create stronger partnerships with underserved and priority groups. The Public Health Agency of Canada strives to promote and protect health of Canadians through innovative approaches. A precision public health approach can work to improve how research is completed, how programs are designed, implemented and evaluated, and can act as an innovative tool to inform policy decisions. Other governing bodies that would greatly benefit from precision public health in their daily practice would be the six national collaborating centers for public health and the Canadian Public Health Association. 
These two bodies complete evidence-based work, develop knowledge translation tools, and guide decision makers on public health best practices. It is recommended that both the NCCs and CPHA become leaders in incorporating precision public health into practice. So to conclude, precision public health is a tool that can provide promising benefits for many diverse, underserved, and priority populations. As technology continues to develop and non-traditional data collection and public health surveillance becomes more prevalent, the future of public health and the possibility of eradicating health inequities in Canada feels even more achievable when applying a precision public health model. So this concludes my presentation. Um, I'd like to express how thankful I am for the ongoing support that I received throughout my MPH and practicum. A big thank you to my practicum supervisor, Dr. Beth Jackson, and the very talented EPER team. Uh, thank you to my practicum instructor, Dr. Victoria Barr, and to each of the faculty members who have influenced me over the course of my graduate degree. And finally, a big special thank you to all of my family and friends who have supported me every step of the way. <laughs>